Thank you. Well, about three weeks ago, my mom came home from the, my 80-year-old mom came home from the grocery store, visibly upset, because she had, and I asked her what had happened, and she had been harassed by the grocery store clerk who kept pushing her away as she was trying to buy some grapes. And she was trying to pick up grapes, and they, she, they were, she was told, go stand over there. And so she moved over, and they said, no, go stand over there. And they just kept hassling her, and this happens all the time. Um, and my mom finally confronted the grocery store clerk and said, listen, I'm just here to buy grapes for my granddaughter's lunch. I'm not here to fight you. Just let me buy the grapes. And this bill will allow me to go home and tell my mom we did something about it. And this bill tells the AAPI community, who are seen as the other, who are often asked, where are you from, really? And I've had that happen to me while wearing the uniform of this nation with her flag on my shoulder, been asked, where are you from, really? Yeah, yeah, your dad has been here since before the revolution, but where are you from? This tells the AAPI community, we see you, and we will stand with you, and we will protect you. There's a lot more work to be done. This is a good first step. I want to thank everyone who voted for this bill, and, all of the, and, and for Maisie for taking the lead, and for Senator Blumenthal for working so hard with his excellent amendment and his work with Jerry Moran. Um, I'm just so thankful to my Tri-Caucus colleagues who have worked together on this issue, and I urge all of my colleagues today in, uh, to go out home and talk about this so that all of the AAPIs in their communities know that they are seen and that they are now protected as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Beckworth. Senator Blumenthal. Well, first of all, let me, let me thank my amazing colleagues. You know, the definition of courage, grace under pressure. Uh, Senators Hirono and Duckworth really epitomize it. So thank you to them. And thank you to Senator Schumer for his leadership. He really, he laid it on the line. He made it happen. And it's his leadership that brought us here today. And a tremendous coalition of groups. I want to pay tribute to the... AAPI coalition, but an even broader coalition who have witnessed these kinds of absolutely abhorrent instances of bias and prejudice expressed through violence. The No Hate Bill had a long road to get here. I introduced it last session after I saw and heard bullet holes in mosques, swastikas on synagogues, nooses in locker rooms directed against African Americans, and of course the surge in violence that we've seen against Asian Americans. And I want to thank my colleague, Senator Moran, for his bipartisanship. Don't any, anyone say that we can't do bills, important bills, big bills, bipartisan bills in the United States Senate. When American values are on the line, we can do them. And the kind of action that we've seen today will enable more reporting, which is more prosecution and more deterrence. We know deterrence is necessary because of the surge in numbers, but also Khalid Jabara and Heather Heyer. The No Hate Bill is named for them. The, the anniversary of their deaths, five and four years ago, should remind us of the work that we have still to do against bigotry and bias and hate crimes in America. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. We'll take questions. Henny? Yes. Well, well, we certainly look at any other alternatives, but when you have someone placed in the Justice Department whose sole job is to focus on anti-Asian violence, pointing it out and recommending where prosecution is appropriate, I believe this will greatly increase prosecution against, anti, uh, against those who uh, have anti-Asian violence, who perpetrate it. 
It also provides for better penalties. It provides for hotlines for local prosecutors. It provides for training. Uh, yes, more reporting, but also strengthening law enforcement against it. And it expresses this administration's determination. An attorney general who said in his confirmation hearing in response to our questions, hate crimes tear at the fabric of America. He is committed to enforce hate crimes prohibition. Yes. Okay. Yes. Look, let me say two things. First, we believe we need big, bold legislation. We believe it has to be green. We believe that it should not be put, the paying for it should not be on the backs of working people. But we're willing to work with Republicans whenever we can to achieve that goal. But big, bold legislation is our number one goal. Well, I haven't seen it yet. The devil is in the details. But as I said, any infrastructure proposal has to be green and cannot be paid for on the backs of working people. We'll see what their proposal does. I haven't studied it yet. Yes. Look, I've encouraged Senator Booker to talk to Senator Scott and see if they can come up with something. They are making progress. I'm not going to get into the details of their discussions. Um, but if we could come up with a strong bill that deals with the systemic bias that's been in our police forces for far too long, uh, that would be great. So I've encouraged them to talk to one another, and their discussions are making some progress. Yes. Yes, next. I've already encouraged, I've talked to Senator Booker on numerous occasions and encouraged him to talk to Senator Scott. So it's something I welcome. Are there other members that you've seen in the That will be, uh, there are some others who are being involved, yes. But Senator Booker is taking the lead. Yes. We'd like to, look, I hope we can have amendments on these bills. They should be germane, they shouldn't be gotcha amendments, but of course we entertain amendments on the water bill. Now the water bill came out of committee to the credit of Chairman Carper and Ranking Member Capito unanimously. It's a significant bill. It has broad support in the country. And of course we welcome amendments uh, to make it, to improve it. And we hope we'll spend a good number of time, a good number of days next week on that bill. Uh, you know, you'll have to, I'm going to wait till uh, S uh, President Biden uh, makes his presentation. Excuse me, Mark, do you have any timeline that you expect to actually bring a D.C. statehood bill to the floor of the Senate? Look, D.C. statehood is something I strongly believe in. We're going to do everything we can to pass it. Yes. Uh, I haven't seen the specific, uh, there are two bills actually out there. Um, my view is this, there has to be a fair process undergone to determine uh, what the Puerto Rican people want and we would follow their lead. We have a lot of divisions within the Puerto Rican community now is what the future should be. Yes, did you have one already? I want to call on people who hadn't asked. No, go ahead. Well, we're going to look at everything and look at suggestions. It's a strong bill, make no mistake about it. And as I said, it sends a signal to our Asian American community that we stand with you and to the bigots that we're going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. And it's, it has some very significant provisions and has been strengthened as we've been on the floor. If there are other things that people think are needed, we'll look at them very carefully. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice weekend. Thank you for coming. Good job. Thank you. You too. You too.